The headlines tell the story. First term government is now facing serious trouble, one says. 35 to 49 year olds generally decide elections. In the middle of Australia, 60% feel worse off financially than they did two years ago. Labor's primary vote has collapsed. The government is tone deaf to the real problems. And now we learn that the Prime Minister and his government can't keep track of the criminals released as a result of that High Court case. Four of them have refused, can you believe this? Four of them have refused to wear ankle monitors. What? They had criminals telling the government what to do? Come on, one of them, a criminal is missing. But as is the case with this government, no details provided. Like The Voice, no details. Like, what did you discuss with President Xi? Not your business, no details. I think Claire O'Neill, the Home Affairs Minister, has ability. It's now being said that she received advice that the government would win the High Court case and be able to keep the asylum seekers detained, which raises this question again, doesn't it, about the advice that government receives on everything. Cost of living, energy policy, housing, immigration, all comes from the bureaucrats. But is there no one in the government who can see that a lot of this advice, as with coronavirus, but is there no one with adequate judgment to know that this advice is rubbish? But the age old chestnut has returned. Australians want our borders to be secure and Labor can't deliver. Remember this, the Prime Minister of Australia wasn't Prime Minister in 2015. But at the Labor conference then, Mr Albanese declined to support a motion that would adopt boat turnbacks as Labor policy. He said, quote, I couldn't ask someone else to do something that I couldn't see myself doing, unquote. That is, turning boats around. Well, now we have a freed detainee who refuses to wear an electronic tracker. How the hell can he refuse? What? Does he just say, I won't wear the tracker? So basically telling us the Albanese government is powerless and impotent. Now this bloke's uncontactable. And the public know, as my old man would say, bugger all. We don't know his age. We don't know his appearance. We don't know his suspected location, his criminal history, his background. He might walk through the door in a minute. We're not told anything. So on national security, Labor again, is Labor as it always was. But Treasurer Chalmers says spending's the problem. If we want to stop interest rates from rising, we've got to control spending. But the government now is going to unveil a $255 million funding boost for security agencies to monitor former detainees. James Patterson, the opposition Home Affairs spokesman, is right when he says, the parliament should not rise before Christmas without having legislative instruments on the books to protect the community. Well, Troy Bramston is a splendid writer and thinker, but he's a Labor supporter, a former Labor staffer. And he writes today, quote, there is growing anxiety among Labor ministers and backbench MPs that at the midpoint of the parliamentary term, Anthony Albanese's government is drifting, struggling to deal with a range of pressing policy issues and lacks a compelling forward-looking agenda to rally behind in the lead up to the next federal election, unquote. Now, of course, everything since the appalling judgment of the Prime Minister on the voice referendum, everything since has been downhill for the government. In relation to the High Court ruling on indefinite immigration detention, Bramston writes, there were seemingly no contingency plans. Voters were told there would be no legislative remedy. Then they were told, oh, there would be new legislation. He said, it's unacceptable to appear to be doing nothing in response to murderers, rapists and drug dealers being freed into the community, unquote. But Bramston also makes a sobering point that the coalition, now he says 21, I say 19, but it's a lot of seats, 19, I believe it is, that have to be won by the coalition if they want to win a majority in the federal parliament. 